train hard, recover faster, faster, and bring on the gains with Recovery Systems. And your host, Coach Mike on the Mic. Coach Mike on the Mic here. Welcome to this episode of For the Love of Exercise. So with me today is Colin O'Shea of Cos Coaching. Thanks very much, Mike. Glad to be here. Good to see you again. It's been roughly a year since we caught up. Uh, aside from seeing you at races and seeing all your team perform really well, you must be really happy with the way your team's developing. And also it's great to see people putting the work in, but getting the results. No, exactly. And I think you've, you've hit on two points there. It's... You know, good results come from consistency, yep. dedication, and uh, the third word is uh, hard work. Yes. And there's been some really good results over the course of the past year. Uh, we had uh, Matteo Tamanio. He did his first Ironman in Busselton in uh, December, and he did sub-10 hours. That's amazing. So that was great, because uh, we, we had a bet on together in, in that he was going to fire me as a coach <laughs> if, uh, if I didn't get him sub five hours in a 70.3 okay so he hadn't gone sub five hours in a 70.3 right so we decided to double up right <laughs> so he went sub 10 in the iron man so that was that was a good one he's uh he's competing in uh, geelong in the 70.3 in a few right. weeks time so well a sub 10 is a crack a day and as a as a rule of thumb generally you can't really uh realistically double a half iron man time no. and for a for a full iron man uh speaking from experience the the full iron man is a different sort of beast but isn't it interesting how different athletes will actually find their sweet spot um, no exactly yeah. so you see you see some athletes and they're very much diesel engines yes and you know they can they can last at 75% of FTP all day long and they can keep their heart rate under control and really access some of those fat stores. So that's Mr. 300 Watt, isn't it? Mr. 300 Watt, let's name him. Uh, Mr. 300 Watt, uh, it's Matteo, so I, I hope he'll be uh, okay with me uh, saying that. All right, let's say 300 something watts, so we're, we're not actually naming exactly. Now, um, guiding an athlete, you may get an athlete that comes along and wants to do a full line man but you know that they're more suited, uh, from a biological point of view, to, for a sprint and Olympic distance. Yeah. How do you manage that? I think what you do is you first sit down with the, the athlete, you see what their past history is, yep. uh, get, get their objectives. Um, if they ultimately really, really want to do an Ironman, and if that's their stated desire, I'm not going to stand in the way of that. You know, that that's, that's what they want. Yep. But what we'll do is we'll develop a program for them to have races before they get to that Ironman. So yeah. they may have an OD, they may have a sprint, a few 70.3s, and then they'll do that Ironman race. Yeah. But through that process, we will look at their, their abilities, and it'll become very, very evident that they're doing better at some of the shorter races. Right. Uh, so we can really focus in the training and, and see some of the gains when they're doing some short, sharp stuff. Yes. And then if they're doing some of the, the longer rides or longer runs and having to you know, stay, at, stay at zone three for maybe three hours and that's proving a challenge, then that, that's, that, that's giving us very good feedback. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, if it's somebody's dream or desire mm. to complete an Ironman, to cross that line and to hear the announcer saying, you are an Ironman, <laughs> you know, that, that's something that makes this job <laughs> you know, absolutely amazing for me. It is, so. it is. No, it's a wonderful thing. And over the years, can you tell us about what's changed in the way you coach, in the way you measure, and the way you guide athletes? And you're also mentoring some other coaches as well. So let's pull that into the element of yeah. the question as well. Yeah, so that's right. Like, I think, I think over the, the course of the past few years, the, the athletes that I've coached vary from the beginner that just want to do an OD to those that want to do really well in an Ironman and qualify for Kona or qualify for the, the 70.3 Worlds and, and do well at, at those championships. Yeah. I think what has changed is, is, is the awareness of, of our bodies and becoming aware on a day-to-day -day basis as to when we should push and when we should back off. Yeah. And it's not only using data 
So data is important and yeah. we use a lot of data in terms of how we analyze our sessions, but really is how we feel. Um, what, are the, what are the drivers that lead into how we feel? How much right. sleep are we getting? Yeah. You know, sleep is so important. If an athlete has you know, less than six hours sleep in a night and then has a really, really hard session the next day, we've got to ask ourselves, do you really want to do that session or should we do something differently? Yeah. So I think it's, it's an awareness of where the athlete is over the course of the training cycle um, that, that leads us to, to amend and, and shift programs. Also, um, it's, it's, it's taking uh, nutritional information and ascertaining what type of athlete, are, from a nutritional standpoint, nutritional standpoint, the athlete is. Yeah. So I could say, okay, one type could be, you know, a highly processed diet, high in carbs. That could be athlete number one. The middle athlete could be, you know, somebody that eats a balanced diet, and type three could be somebody on a, a low carb, high fat diet. Yeah. Yeah. And and how they approach training yeah. is slightly different. So I think that's that's one of the ways that things have changed. There's yeah. a few points in there. Yeah. And then the final thing in terms of my business, how that's moved, I started back in, I suppose, the, the early part of 2016. I set up Cos Coaching in Singapore. It was just me. Um, over the course of the past few years, I've taken on Charlene Tang. She was one of my athletes. Uh, she's a Singaporean, very, very good athlete, dedicated person, um, a very good coach now in her own right. Uh, so she's coaching uh, approximately 20 athletes, yeah. uh, yielding some very, very good results. Yeah. Um, and recently, actually, just, just in the past uh, few weeks, I've taken on a dedicated cycling coach. You know, there are many people you know, in the region that need you know, a coach to take them through for a criterium, for a, a tour race, yeah. a tap to tour. So many, there's so many events over here. And I know you're, you're involved in cyclo sports. Yes. So they have some great races in the region. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bunch riding, bike handling skills and all those sorts of things, yeah. That, what, what I picked up and what I heard that, uh, that is absolute gold is there's elements of teaching the athlete or working with the athlete to have a really good understanding of perceived effort and, and also the, the state that they're in following a training session and how that maps to this week, this month, this cycle, this training cycle. So I, I believe that as, as coaches that's kind of nirvana when the athlete reaches that very high level of understanding of what's going on in their body. So that's, that's super. Yeah, and you know, we, there, there's, different, there's different tools to, uh, to measure effort. You know, it could be a power meter on the bike, you could have a tempo trainer in your ear for the pool, or you could, you know, you just have your watch for heart rate or, or pace for the run. Yep. You know, I've got some athletes and I've just been analysing their, their stats over the past few weeks and, you know, I'd be giving them targets in the pool, you know, you do 120, 100 metres, just bang on in on that time every 100. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, I'd be getting the comments back saying, yeah, I've done, done this, done this. And I said, oh, have you had a beeper in your ear or, you know, have you just been swimming to pace? And it's, yeah, I've been swimming to pace. Right. And, you know, for me, that's, that's just amazing. It it's is, just complete yeah. attunement yeah. in terms of where that athlete is yeah. in terms yeah. of understanding pace, understanding cadence, understanding, un understanding rhythm in the water. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it is interesting because um, some athletes can't do that. It's not innate in them to do that and they need all the mechanical uh, guidelines in order to give them the instant feedback like the beeper or the, the, the cadence on the bike and others yet, yet others can just feel it. Yeah, exactly. But what, what, we must, what we must do is, because in a race, something could break. Yep. Hopefully it won't. Yes. But we do need to be in tune with our bodies. Yeah, so absolutely. My coach, he gives me targets. Yeah. But, you know, I look at those targets, but I have to go by feel as well, and I have to, I have to see what the race dynamics are, and those yeah. race dynamics yeah. might change. Yeah. I think it's, it's easier to deviate from... Uh, targets the shorter the race yep because you can push yourself more you can hang on more yes yes if you're in an Ironman situation and let's say your target for the Ironman is 200 watts and you go 250 watts for the yeah, first yeah. hour yes 
you know that that's that that's probably you know one not in tune with your body no. and, and and two an incorrect approach and strategy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're you're probably not going to last. You're probably going to pay the price. Day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So what I loved about what you just said, when my coach gives me targets, I think a good question to ask of any coach is who is your coach, and because we all need to carry on learning. Yes. It's a it's a process and it. It's it's also a statement of the fact that we all that we all need to uh, come to is, is that we don't know everything. There's always something we can we can learn. So I think that's a really that's a really healthy uh, a very healthy approach to your own personal development as a, as a coach as well. No, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk races. Uh, yeah. Now you've been involved in, and I know Charlene's done really well in a particular series called the Tri Factor. And uh, well done, Charlene. Uh, Charlene's a customer of ours, by the way. Oh, okay. And in your team, we we happen to have, I think, around six or seven customers. Although I don't think they like telling anyone that they're using our gear, because it's one of those marginal gains thing that let's not tell too many people. So I'm just saying that because. It's quite funny that one of the leading cycle clubs in Singapore, we have a lot of customers. So I won't mention the name, but it begins with them. And uh, there are a lot of team members in there, and they never do a single post because they want to keep it a bit of a secret, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but privately, they message us and say, uh, your stuff's really good. And we've got a few members of your team as well that are messages mentioned messaging us regularly so that's part of the marginal gains process you mentioned a lot of things earlier around sleep around nutrition and understanding your body type and what how to fuel and so on these are all elements of marginal gains aren't they no exactly and you know i think i think ultimately they need to do the work yes that's yep. number one yep. so i think marginal gains are great yeah and we do talk to people about marginal gains but do do the work number one, yeah. and then the marginal gains surrounding that. And you know, I think I think recovery is so underplayed. Um, yep. It is so important just being able to do that next session, being able to have quality for that next session. Yes. Yep. So, if if we can make the athlete in a better state through recovery systems, through better sleep, through better nutrition and hydration, yep. through you know going to physios, massage, whatever it may be, yeah. then... Foam rolling. Foam rolling. <laughs> um, yeah. Then, you know, th that is a very, very important part of, yeah. of what we do. I think the other thing that we see with athletes, and I think we touched on this because you've, you've started golf recently again. Yes, yeah, yes. Is, uh, is, is, is just body, yeah. body maintenance yeah, and, yeah. And, and flexibility and uh, opening up certain areas. Absolutely. Before I go back on to the trifecta series, which I sidetracked us on, um, yeah, golf for me is the new decade, and I turned 60 uh, a year ago. I'm nearly 61. So for me, the, the, next, uh, the next great... A journey for me is a journey of mobility and uh, because I know if I do too much uh, one-dimensional stuff like a lot of cycling and and so on I will stiffen up really badly and the the, the real um, crusade for me so to speak is one of mobility so golf's been a really good one uh, for me because it's movement on a multi multi level I didn't know how my body uh, would respond because I've had spinal surgery and a hip replacement. And so I, I was hoping that, you know, it, it was going to help with my, uh, um, with my rehab, so to speak. And so far, so good. And I've, I've enjoyed the, the mental element of taking something that's a highly complex movement and simplifying it. Yeah. And, and as you know, because you're a golfer from days gone by, Sadly, endurance sports and the time for golf don't sort of coexist. Oh uh, yeah, co co completely. I, I just I, I couldn't I couldn't justify. Maybe you have to wait till you're 60. Perhaps I think that might be a nice thing, and you know you, you can go down to New Zealand and have, uh, have plenty of lovely golf courses to go out on. Yes. But yeah. I, I think taking taking the key points of what you were saying. Yep. Something that that we are instill very much in our athletes is, you know, just looking after their bodies after exercise yeah. in terms of not tightening the body up. Yes, so other yeah. things they can do could be Pilates, yoga, making sure that they're doing lateral movements. Yes, absolutely. So hip openings. Yeah. 
um, which we see a lot of problems injury-wise in yeah. athletes, where yeah. Yeah. you know down around the hips and glutes, they're not firing correctly. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 working with key specialists there as well. Yeah. Uh, whether it be physios, osteos, um, specialists for for run gate, running gait, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. they're all areas that again will will add to the efficiency of the athlete. Yeah. And the, if the efficiency is better it's going to turn into performance. Yeah, absolutely. So my learnings coming out of endurance sports for some years and into something like golf was to look to eliminate blockages because I knew I'd built them up. And that was my thoracic area, my hip area, opening them up, opening up the lateral, uh, the, the, um, it, all, all the lower back area so that my movement could be as fluid as possible. And so that I could also survive long term the dynamic movement of a golf swing. And yeah. so it's lots of learnings that, it, that I'm really grateful for. And I'm really grateful to be able to read what's going on in, in my body. Now, uh, I'm hearing the same thing about your team member members, that they're wanting to continually peel back the onion, layer after layer, looking for what's next, where's my next improvement? Uh, what, what do I need to do differently? What do I need to do better? And I, I think that's great. You know, the the group that we have, we've we've built up a community. So we've got a, I suppose, a big forum where they can all chat with each other, yep. and we we arrange uh, talks and seminars for our athletes. We we go on weekends away, and yeah, um, it's 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 really taken on, I suppose, a life of its own at the moment as well. In that, yep. Yep. you know, everybody's seeking to to improve, and yep. everybody's seeing how their friends are doing or how other well athletes are doing yeah. and, and, and trying to learn on, 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 on some of the, the improvements and the, the ways that these athletes have improved as well. So uh, I think the community spirit is, uh, is fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so cultures, culture and that tribal effect is, is a wonderful thing. So coming back to the trifecta, both you and Charlene have done very well in the race series and, and other of your athletes. But notably, when we see COS racing at races, you tend to be, your guys tend to be at the sharp end of the race rather than the trailing end of the race. So you, your uh, uh, comments and let's, let's start by talking about trifecta series and let's talk about some challenges potentially, and we hope they're not going to be, but some challenges potentially to racing in uh, the, the current coronavirus or, um, yep. uh, outbreak. So just talk us through your view of uh, the race scene, upcoming races, and possibly some potential threats as well. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm an ambassador for TriFactor. Uh, it's, it's been a, a local Singapore race, uh, the series, for approximately 10 years, and now they've branched out regionally. Yeah. And Elvin and, and team have done a fantastic job. Yeah. Uh, so now they have races in Thailand, the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, and China. Uh, so Charlene and I uh, raced in, in both the Singapore races and China last year. Um, the World Championship, they, they're, the Tri-Factor World Championship is in Kuzhou in China. It's two hours by high-speed rail from Shanghai. They put on uh, an excellent event there. The, they've got full road closures. Um, you swim in the river and, and then a beautiful run. Uh, Cameron Brown is an ambassador as well oh, and yeah. he comes yeah. over, uh, he's a fellow countryman. Yeah. Uh, so he's, he's won the event uh, there the past two years. So. It's, it's just a real friendly, fun, um, re good race format. The format that they have at each race, they've got a long distance akin to a similar distance to a half Ironman. Right. They've got an Olympic distance and then a sprint as well. So and, and in each one of the, the respective uh, regional countries, um, they, they have garnered a lot of support. So in, in Thailand, it's in Hua Hin. In the uh, Philippines, it's in Clark. Vong Tao in uh, Vietnam, yep. and then it's in Belatong in uh, Indonesia. So yeah. some really interesting destinations and nice places to go on uh, on holiday too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second part to your question is we've, we currently have the coronavirus. Um, I expect races in China to be, yeah, it's, it's an obvious statement, to be curtailed yeah. for the immediate future, unfortunately. Yeah. And I think we just must, must stay vigilant and... Uh, potentially uh, expect uh, some further cancellations and races going forward. I think we all just have to see how 
uh, this this virus will expand, but certainly it's branching out from mainland China into uh, some of the other Southeast Asian countries. And yeah. um, you know, I, I I don't think us as athletes uh, should take risks there, but we also need to be socially responsible as well. Yes. Uh, in terms of limiting travel if, uh, if there are uh, issues yeah. uh, still. Yeah, it's not the first challenge we've had, of course, uh, SARS 17 years ago that we know about, but there's been uh, a, a, a air quality issues that have uh, come up from time to time, and you and I were talking offline about setting sensible limits for athletes of when to train. What would be a sensible limit <coughs> for training indoors versus outdoors mm -hmm. and and also just being mindful that some people are more sensitive than others and yeah and I, th I think this we, we talked offline on this and some people have certain predispositions such as asthma yeah uh, a, a general rule of thumb is under 100 in Singapore tends to be acceptable whilst yeah. At that level may seem high uh, for people in Europe or Australia, although Australia not now, given the, the yeah, bushfires we've absolutely. unfortunately had. Yeah, yeah. Um, and anything under 100 is, is probably fine to go outside. Between 100 and 150, it's, uh, I think, at the discretion of the athlete, and then anything under over 150, yeah. uh, I think it's a definite no-no. Uh, yeah. And, and um, measuring intensity or keeping a lid on intensity at the same time. Exactly, and I think yeah. I think even if it's even if it's ninety hundred outside, and you're doing a long ride and it's an easy long ride, you yep. still feel it in the lungs, yeah, you and do. you feel the impact of that afterwards. So, I, the the recommendation is if you can, do something on a treadmill. Yeah. Or indoors on a trainer. Yeah, you can yeah. you can just plug in, watch watch a video, watch whatever, and yep. uh, you know just do it on the treadmill. Yeah. Well, recently you mentioned Australia. Australia topped out at nine hundred and ninety nine. Yeah. Uh, which I, I think is the theoretical thousand limit. It, it doesn't the the scale doesn't go above that. At the same time, we were in New Zealand, and just to give you an idea of the difference, we were our air quality where we were was measuring one. Yeah. So there, you know, there are different challenges in different environments. Of course, New Zealand has ultraviolet uh, light, and you need to cover up, and and so on. Particularly between ten and ten and three or four o'clock in the afternoon, you really need to cover up because yeah. the the sun will do some damage. Um, so we mentioned short-term races. Let's kind of fast forward to the second half of the year. Uh, and you guys have just come off a great camp, I hear, in Kota Kinabalu. Uh, that's right. So we, uh, we did a camp in Kota Kinabalu last weekend. Yep. Uh, we did it at the Shangri-La Rasseria, which is about an hour out of town. Yes. It's got an absolutely fantastic beach there. Yeah, it's lovely. It had some proper surf. Yeah. Uh, and we, we managed to get uh, proper race-like conditions out there. So we had the boys out. We had a few guys in kayaks. Yep. And we uh, we did we did race simulations and Beautiful. it was fantastic because a lot of our, our our athletes and clients are from Singapore so there's no surf yeah so we really got them used to swimming in surf yes and for me it was just beautiful yeah uh, you know I yeah. come from the west of Ireland we've good yeah. surf all the time yeah. and yeah it's it, it's just something we we normally don't get and. The, the cycling routes, uh, they, were, they were really varied. Uh, we got some really nice country roads, l little traffic, um, got some good climbing. Yeah. Uh, the second day, there was a nice little ride. It was up and down, 1.5K of elevation. Yeah. And then the, the running was good as well because there's, there's some nice buggy carts around the golf course. Yeah. Seeing yeah. Mount Kinabalu in the, uh, in the distance. This sounds great. When's the next one? Uh, the next one will be... Uh, Langkawi, uh, not until September. Okay. And we will be limiting numbers to, to 20. Okay, uh, and, and that's a lead up to the Langkawi race? Correct, and it's, le it's lead up both to the Langkawi race and to all the races in the back end of the year. So yes, yep. the idea is we'll do it the, the first weekend of September. I, yep. I believe it's the, the 4th to the 6th of September. Um, so people will be just coming back after the summer. We'll just give them a boost before they, before they go into their, uh, to their full race training and then they can get very specific but this will give them the boost yeah, uh, yeah. of training to, for the no, back end cool. of the year. Now you mentioned people coming back for the summer so that's a, a bit of a lead in that a fair bit of your squad are internationals. Correct, uh, so th the squad comes from all over really, uh, all over the world and, and now I coach not only in Singapore but on, on all continents really. Um, so. 
we have we have a fair proportion of clients from Europe. Yeah. Uh, so in the summertime, i.e. Uh, the July and August period, a lot of the European clients will yeah. go home. Yes. And they might do less training. So then coming back after the summer. Yeah. And I have a number of my, my clients in Singapore that, uh, that are Singaporean and they have kids and they might be helping their kids with PSLE yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. around that time yeah. so you know they, they can't do as much training then so they take a bit of a break and then they, they block it up and uh, do another uh, an, another you know eight to twelve weeks into yeah. their race at the end of the year. It's always a balancing act, balancing your passion for sport, you, the, the things you need to do to sustain yourself, a job, your family life, key relationships and so on so it's a it's a really interesting one and uh, it's great to see, uh, we, we saw, or I saw over the years, uh, having had coached a lot of couples who both had Ironman aspirations, who had kids, and uh, I don't know how they did it all. I think it's, I think it's phenomenal. I think it just, it requires a lot of uh, structuring and yep. uh, planning of calendars. Yes. It can be done. Um, but I think I think each each one of the the couple uh, needs to be understanding to each other. Yeah, I think that's the key thing. But it's just great when you see families getting fitter together. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. that's uh, it. You know, for me as a coach, uh, it's it's just really nice seeing people being happy, being fit, being healthier. Yeah. All right. Now, just to to finish up, a couple of questions. One is your main your main personal goal for the year and second part of the question is your main goal for cos coaching uh, so the main personal goal for the year i'll be competing in the ironman world championships in kona hawaii uh, so i'd just like to improve in my placing from a few years ago i came uh, just 20 seconds so hopefully i can uh, do a bit better than that this time in terms of the uh, the goal for cos coaching it's just to continue to, uh, to foster fun improvement in race results over the course of the year, to have you know, more athletes represent us um, at the 70.3 World Championships um, and at the Ironman World Championships. I think that's the, that's the ultimate goal. Right, any, uh, the, the two great goals, any ITU goals uh, in relation to, to those? Because of course, we've got the Ironman World Champs that we know about, but uh, also there may be some country elements of where ITU could be a, a possibility. So I think, uh, I think there's some individual goals of some of the underlying athletes. So we've got one of our athletes competing in uh, Super League Bali. He's, he's, oh, in, the yes. pro, he's in the pro field, yep. uh, Benoit Besnier. Uh, yep. So we'll, we're really wishing him well uh, there. And he's, he's mid-20s. He's uh, got a very bright future ahead and he's getting faster day by day. So um, We'll really just see where, where he gets with that and it'd be great if he uh, can, can finish up at the top end of, uh, of that race. Really good. All right, Colin, it's been great catching up with you. And uh, as always, we, we see uh, Cos Coaching and your good self on the rise and we wish you all the best for the coming year, both for yourself and for your team. Thanks, Michael, and uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for having Recovery Systems and a, a great product for all our athletes as well. Uh, no worries, and we'll... Uh, We'll sign off for now, so that's Coach Mike on the mic for, for the love of exercise. I'm going to do that again. So we'll sign off for now. <laughs> that's Coach Mike on the mic for the love of exercise this week with Colin O'Shea. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye.